لا ما عاد يرعبني ظلم يهددني لا شيء أخسر إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد عباد الله اعلموا أن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة كل ضلالة في النار My topic won't be as funny as Sheikh Asim al-Hakim It is indeed a serious one And it won't be what my brother Zahallah Khair announced Because of what I've seen lately I change Based of what I've seen and I noticed recently Not in Kenya but amongst the Muslims, regardless where I go. Today I want to talk about a subject that is extremely crucial and important, especially for those of us who live amongst the non-Muslims. And this is the topic of manners, al-akhlaq. I want to start by saying, by mentioning what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was all about. And you remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his messenger, messenger of Allah had already received the respect of his community and society. There was a lot of things that Allah could have mentioned about him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he was a perfect human being. In terms of his personality, he was the best father the best husband, the best brother, the best friend. He was a perfect human being. When some of the people used to come who never met him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they stand or they sit in front of him, they used to tremble. And Rasulullah used to say, Hawwun alayk. He said, take it easy, take it easy. Innama ana imu'idam, innama ana ibn imra'atin. He said, relax, relax. Indeed, I'm a son of a lady who used to eat simple food in the city of Mecca. I'm not perfect. I'm not special. This is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But look, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking about the messenger of Allah, about, he didn't talk about the way he looked. He didn't talk about the beautiful recitation, the, the, the beautiful voice that he had, but he talked about one thing, which is his manners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O oh Muhammad, indeed you possess the most perfect manners. Perfect manners. So why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say, you have the perfect body, you have the perfect shape, you the you the, you so handsome, mashallah. I have not created anyone like you. Allah did not say about the messenger of Allah anything as such, but He said, "Indeed, wa inna ka la ala khuluqin azim." So let us talk about manners today, 
Because what I've noticed, a lot of non-Muslims, when they see Muslims themselves, they don't want to become Muslims. We push them away because of our manners and behaviors. So what is manners? Al-akhlaq, ya ibadullah. As a Muslim, as a person, is really what shapes you. This is your kayan. This is who you are. And that's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraged the sahaba, encouraged us to have perfect manners. And he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I want you to listen to this hadith. He say, inna min ahabbakum ilayya yawm al-qiyamah, wa aqrabakum ilayya majlis ahasinukum akhlaq. He said, the most beloved wants to meet on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah and closest to me in, a, in sitting because on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah perhaps Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would sit in a similar gathering but Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala knows that gathering and then the Sahaba of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Salihin they would be close to the Messenger of Allah based on their manners so the Messenger of Allah is the closest ones to me and the most beloved ones to me are those who have perfect manners. So, akhlaq is very crucial. Not only that, as a mu'min, as a Muslim, with your simple manners, with your akhlaq, you can reach the level of those who fast every other day through their lives, those who stand up qiyam al every single night, and that's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna, he said, indeed, a believer will reach the level of those who fast and those who stand up for Qiyam al based on their manners. You may not read the Quran all night long. You may not fast every other day. But if you have good manners, with that reward, you can be that level. And guess what? On the day of Yom al Qiyamah, when you're really crying and screaming for simple hasana for one simple hasana the heaviest thing on the scale from the deeds that you have performed is your manners لذلك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ما شيء ما من شيء اثقل في الميزان المؤمن يوم القيامه من حسن الخلق he say nothing will wait on the scale of a woman on the day of yawm al qiyamah than his manners his akhlaq and his conduct. Which a lot of us as Muslims nowadays, we really don't have it. We lack it. And we need to understand, Ya Ibadullah, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged us to have that manners because with that manners, we really can give da'wah just by having and possessing those manners. The Messenger of Allah, as a matter of fact, he put on a, re an, an, an award and a reward and he said, listen to this hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. See, three things he said. He said, I guarantee you a house in paradise or at the beginning of paradise if you leave argument knowing that you're right. You have argument with your Muslim brothers and you know for a fact he's wrong and you're right. And you say, because of the brotherhood, brotherhood between us, I'm going to give in to whatever you want. So what do you want? I think this should be here or that should be here. Bismillah, I'll give it to you. If you do this, then the messenger of Allah say, I guarantee you a palace at the beginning of Jannah. And then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wa baytin. And he say, a house, a palace in the middle of Jannah. For those who would avoid lying, even jokingly. If you avoid lying, then Allah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, I guarantee you a palace in the middle of Jannah. And a palace in the highest level of Jannah, which is for those al-a'la, for those of you who have good manners. Not, not for those of you who perform hajj, after hajj, after hajj, or you know, go to, to, to the haram, for umrah, 
every Ramadan or travel to Mecca for every three months. No, for those who have good manners and good akhlaq. Very important. If you study the seer of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you would see that a lot of people accepted Islam because of the akhlaq of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because of the akhlaq. He didn't give them da'wah. He did not, you know, give them free DVDs and CDs. He did not bring them to a you know, journey of faith conference and say, come, I'll introduce you to Yusuf Estes. I'll introduce you to your new revert. His name is Abu Usama Dhabi. I'll introduce you to this. No. No. Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed akhlaq. Listen to this. One of the people who killed 70 of the Sahaba, him and his tribe, they killed 70 of the Sahaba. 70, not one, not seven, but 70. And they were the best 70 Sahaba of that time. One of the, some of the, of the best of the Sahaba. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started teaching Sahaba Quran and he started teaching them Sunnah. And the first 70 who graduated from the University of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were sent to give da'wah to these tribes. And when they got there, those tribes gang against those 70 Sahab and they killed them. So once, once after that, while the Sahaba were patrolling around the city of Medina, they captured this Sahabi, this man by the name Thumama. They didn't know who this man was. So they brought him to the masjid. Now he's a prisoner. He's a non-Muslim who's fighting against Muslims. He, that much they knew, but they didn't know his name. And he's from Bani Hanif. So they bring him, they brought him to the masjid. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes and he looks at this saha, this man. Do you know who this man is? The sahaba said, no. You know, we know he's not one of us and we know he was in the wrong area. Qala, this is thamama, thumama. So the messenger of Allah came to him. فَقَالَ مَا عِنْدَكَ يَا ثُمَامَ He said, Thumama, what do you have? فَقَالَ خَيْرًا يَا مُحَمَّدْ He said, I only have khair, ya Muhammad. And then he, you know, he admitted what he did. فَقَالَ يَا مُحَمَّدْ إِن تَقْتُلْ تَقْتُلْ ذَا دَمِّي He said, if you kill me, you kill a guilty man. I killed 70 of your companions. I'm guilty. And if you pardon me, then I'll be grateful to you. If you want wealth, if you want me to ransom myself, just ask the price and I will pay it. So the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he turned to the sahaba and he said to them, be good to him. Be good to him. Now he's a prisoner. The sahaba of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they used to, you know, deprive themselves from eating and drinking and bring food to this man because the messenger of Allah said, be good to this man. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam assigned a sahabi to milk the Prophet's camel sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and bring that milk to this man. He's a criminal. He killed 70 of the sahaba. And the next day the messenger of Allah came to him. Qala ma indak. What do you have? Qala khayran ya Muhammad. I have only khayr. If you want to kill me, I'm guilty of that. If you want to forgive me, I'll be grateful to you. If you want money, then let me know how much. So the messenger of Allah, once again, he said to the Sahaba, still be good to him. The third day, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked him the same question, and the same reply was given to the messenger of Allah. The messenger of Allah said, let him go. Ya Rasulullah, this man is a criminal. He killed 70 of the Sahaba, 70 of the Huffad. He said, let him go. So they let him go. The moment he went out of the masjid, he took a shower, he, he changed his clothes, he came to the messenger of Allah. فَقَالَ يَا مُحَمَّدْ أَمَّا الْآن نَاو أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He said, now I bear witness there is only one God and you are the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The messenger of Allah said, why don't you accept Islam when I offer you or when I spoke to you? He said, I was afraid that the people would say, I accepted Islam out of fear. 
But when you show me your manners and your akhlaq, you were, he said, before I was brought here, you were the most despised, hated person in my heart. But today, you're the most beloved person because the way you treated me. This is the akhlaq of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa I guarantee you, if we all go out today, just go out and live Islam with the beautiful manners, with the beautiful akhlaq, I guarantee you people in Kenya would accept Islam. I guarantee you that. Because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he displayed the manners, the sahab, the people used to accept Islam, radiyallahu anhum ajma'in. The other story that I can tell you from the manners of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even the way that he used to deal with a juhal, people who do, not, who do not know much about Islam. Now, even the Muslims nowadays who come to the masjid, who don't know, do not, don't have much of Islamic information, you know, we treat them like a second-class citizen. A sister comes to the conference, or she comes to the hijab, and mashallah, maybe she's not dressed the way she should dress. Maybe she's not wearing niqab. Maybe she's not wearing abaya. Maybe she's not wearing jilbab. And you see her, she's coming to the conference with tight jeans, mashallah, simple t-shirt. She wants something, she wants to know something about Islam. What do we do to, the, to those sisters? How do we treat them? You see brothers, mashallah, they're coming to the conference and some of them may not look like perfect Muslims. And how do we treat those people? We treat them again like a second class citizen. Say, brother, subhanallah, what is wrong with you? You know, one of the massages, we were in the masjid in the city of Toronto. And this young man, subhanallah, he, he just came to the masjid. He has no wudu. I don't think he even took, you know, he even purified himself when he used the washroom. You know, and he wanted to pray. But he has tattoo. He has tattoos all over his body. He has tattoo on his neck. He has tattoo on his fingers. He has tattoo, Allah alam where? Everywhere else. And by the way, the funniest thing is when a black person puts tattoos on, subhanAllah. Who can see that tattoo is useless tattoos. Regardless, this man is in the masjid, he has all this tattoo, he's wearing his earrings, you know, but he wants to come to the masjid. That's the reason that why he's here. And then, Iqama was called. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then the Imam said, Allahu Akbar. And this brother, he's looking at the people who's next to him and he wants to do exactly what they're doing because he really don't know what to do. And this older brother, mashallah, before he says Allahu Akbar, he looked at this brother and he said, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan. He said, Takbir, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan. Not Allahu Akbar, but he said, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan. You know, this brother, he knew the, the meaning of A'udhu Billah because his parents were Muslims. So he comes to me after Salah and he says, Sheikh, is it allowed for a person to say A'udhu Billahi before, before Takbir? And he told me what happened. See, this is wrong. See, this is not how we treat the people who come to the Islamic event. Those who come to the masjid because they want to know. The reason that they hear, their heart let them hear. Maybe they had a friend who said, listen, why don't you just come and listen to what these people have to say? And maybe because of them, their lives would change. Wallahi thumma wallahi. The first journey of faith that we did in the city of Toronto. We had a young man who came. And this young man, he was not a, he was not a Muslim. And he just came because his, some of his friends have said, there, are, there is an Islamic conference and we want you to come. He came, and subhanAllah, when he heard the speakers, Allah opened his heart, and he became a Muslim. You know, the second year, and third year, and every year after that, he was one of the main volunteers of the conference. And not only that, he went back to his family, and he started giving da'wah. And subhanAllah, his sisters became Muslims. His, brothers, his brother became a Muslim, and his mother became a Muslim. Now, what would, and you know, he had a funny hairdo, and he had, you know, tattoos. Had we pushed that brother away, he would never, ever accept Islam. Look how the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa dealt with the juhala, 
or simple Muslim of the Sahaba. You remember Mu'adh bin Jabal radiyallahu an, very young man, you know, Hafid, Kathir min Quran, he memorized so much Quran. You know, he used to be so keen and eager to sit next to the Messenger of Allah and learn from him. But he was also the local Imam of his masjid. So he wants to pray and gain the ajr of salah with the Messenger of Allah and then run to his local masjid and lead the salah. So one day, for Salat al Isha, he prayed with the Messenger of Allah and he went back to his local masjid. Now, the Ansar, they, some of them just came back from the farms, you know, they came back from the business. They want to, you know, they've been working all day long. They want to just pray Aisha, go home, eat, take, you know, eat something and, and sleep. But Mu'adh bin Jabal, he did not do anything all day long because he was sitting next to the Messenger of Allah. So when he went, when the Iqamah was called, he said, Allahu Akbar, and he read the Fatiha. After the Fatiha, he said, Alif la mim al kitabu la rayba fi. He read Surah Al Baqarah. This one of the Ansar who was right next to him, he waited for this young man to make ruku. He said, Make him ruku. So he got tired. So what did he do? He walked away, broke away from the Jama'ah. He prayed his Isha by himself, and he went back home. He said, You, mashallah, Mu'ad, continue to Salat al Fajr, inshallah. I don't care. You know. So the Sahaba, some of the people who were sitting, you know, praying, they told the Imam, guess what happened? So and so, he broke away from your salah. So Mu'at said, subhanAllah, that could be an action of a munafiq. I will report him to the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the same people, they told this young man that this is what Mu'at is going to do to you. He's going to report to the messenger of Allah that you broke away from the salah, and that could be a sign of, the nif of a munafiq. What did this young man do? He went to the messenger of Allah. فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Mu'ad, he leads the longest salah. He leads the, mashallah, the young man, he leads salah. And I don't like praying with him. And I don't like praying behind him. Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he got so upset. And when Mu'ad came, and the messenger of Allah saw Mu'ad, his face, the, mate, the face of Rasulullah turned red. And he pointed to Mu'ad. فَقَالَ أَفَتَانٌ أَنْتَ يَا Mu'ad. Are you causing fitna into these people's deen? Are you creating fitna on Mu'ad? And then he said to Mu'ad bin Jabal, and by the way, he loved Mu'ad so much, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, if you want to pray by yourself, pray as long as you want. But if you're leading these people, pray with short surah. Because behind you, you have someone that has hajj, someone who's old, someone who's ill, someone who has you know, something to do. Lead the salah according to your congregation. Then look what the messenger of Allah did. He turned to this man who broke away from Mu'ad bin Jabal. And he said, what do you do in your salah? Simple question. فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Now look what this man going to recite in his salah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, in my salah, أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ I say the tashahud, and I ask Allah, to grant me al-jannah and I ask him to protect me from jahannam and I say assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum that was his salah no fatiha no ikhlas no quran he just said ashhadu allahu akbar ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah ya allah take me to jannah protect me from jahannam assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum that's the salah of the sahabi rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know, he's listening to this young man and this young man said, Ya Rasulullah, la afqahu dandanatak wa la dandanata mu'ad. He said, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi, I don't understand your singing or the singing of Mu'ad bin Jabal. To him, Quran is singing because, you know, you have to, you know, beautify your voice in the recitation. He said, I don't understand your, your, your singing or the singing of Mu'ad bin Jabal, but this is what I do. The messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did not tell him, you are an ignorant person. You've been praying like this all your life. Your salah is not valid. You should make tawbah. Go pray to rak'ah and ask Allah to forgive you. But rather he said, you know, those words of yours, these are the words that we repeat in our singing. Not too complicated.
Then this man said to the Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, Mu'ad calls me Munafiq. Wallahi, when the time comes, I will show him who is a Munafiq and who is not Munafiq. Which means when there's a jihad, I will show whether I'm a, he will know whether I'm a Munafiq or a Mu'min. Subhanallah. So I'll appoint Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the enemy against the Mu'mineen. And there was a war between the Muslims and the, and the non-Muslims of Mecca. When the, everything was done, messenger, messenger of Allah called Mu'ad. فَقَالَ يَا Mu'ad, ما فعل صاحبنا? He said, the man who called us, you know, we do dandana. You know, what did he do? He said, Ya Rasulullah, he was killed in that battlefield. And then Mu'ad ibn Jabal, he said, he cried and said, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi, he spoke the truth and I was not truthful about him, which means I was wrong about this Sahabi radiyallahu. The lesson is not for us to hear the story, even though it's a beautiful story, but the lesson is to know how the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, how he dealt with the simple people, simple Sahab. The other famous story, I will conclude soon, be idnillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the simple man who came to the masjid. A man who accepted Islam and he's sitting in the masjid, sitting in a halaqa. Imagine in masjid al rahmah you know, someone is giving halaqa, Sheikh Yusuf Estes or Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Qahtani, he's giving halaqa. Imagine that. This messenger of Allah is giving halaqa and this Sahabi, he gets up and he goes to at the end of the masjid and he starts urinating in the masjid. Now, if, if that happened in masjid al rahmah Someone he is gonna go, mashallah, give him his shahada bi idnillah. We'll take him to Jannah, one way ticket. You know. The Sahaba they wanted to do exactly the same thing. They all got up to beat this guy up. They want to beat him up. So the messenger of Al Qa La Tazmur, he said, Don't cut his urine, let him finish. Let him finish. Ya Rasulullah is urinating in the masjid. We pray right here. This is a place of salah, this is a place of purity. But he's urinating. He said, Let him finish. When the man finished urinating in the masjid, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, bring water and pour over the urine. So they did. And he said, come. So the sahabi came. He said, this, this place is not for such a thing. This is a place for salah, for ibadah. This sahabi radiyallahu anhu, he liked how the messenger of Allah approached him. And he did not like how the sahabi radiyallahu anhu approached him. So after, uh, shortly after that, the man raised his hand. He said, Ya Allah, have mercy on me and Muhammad and no one else. And <laughs> MashaAllah, take them to Jahannam, I don't care. You know, not just me and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The messenger of Allah, he didn't say, you are ignorant. He said, Laqad hajar tawasiha. He said, you know, there was a wide open door and you made it so narrow, narrow and tight. And let the rahmah of Allah reach all of us. This is the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how we used to, you know, teach the Sahab. Even the non-Muslims, some of them were very arrogant when they talked to the messenger of Allah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very, very patient with them, very kind to them, and he would treat them like that. Remember the man who grabbed the thob, you know, of the messenger of Allah to the point the color of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thobe left mark on his neck and he turned red. And this man, he is shaking the messenger of Allah. And what he's saying? He say, give me from that wealth. This wealth is not yours or your father's. Give me from that. Umar ibn Khattab wants to draw his sword and cut his neck. You know, Khalid ibn Walid, he lost his mind. How could you touch the messenger of Allah? And Rasulullah said, no, let them go. Let him go. Let him go. Ya Arabi, come with me. He said, you come with me. Come to my house. He took him to his house. He let him sit the best place in the house of the messenger of Allah. And he said, serve him food. So the people, the Sahab, the wife of the messenger of Allah, they served him food. And then he said, I'll give you this much. Are you happy? He said, no, Ya Muhammad, I'm not happy. He said, what about this much? He said, I'm still not happy. He said, what about this much? What about this much? He said, now is enough, Ya Muhammad. Now I'm happy. He said, Ya Arabi, are you happy? He said, I'm very happy. Thank you very much. And then he says, now let us go out and tell the Sahaba 
that you're being treated well and you please so they won't have anything towards you in their hearts. So this Arabi, he comes and he says to the Sahaba, may Allah reward Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and please with him. This was the manner of the messenger of Allah. This man, he wants to, he went back to his people. And what did he tell his people? He said, oh my people, accept Islam, accept this religion. For wallahi, I have never seen any religion like this one. And all his people accepted Islam because of akhlaq, because of the manner of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of good manners in Islam. It is so crucial. It is really you who will push people away from Islam or invite them to Islam. It is your manners, it is your akhlaq. We live in the West. And we meet non-Muslim every single day. We meet people who will curse the messenger of Allah, who will curse Allah, who will talk bad about the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we can do the same thing and talk bad about them, about their faith, about their religion, but that's not what the messenger of Allah taught us sallallahu alayhi wa He taught us to be patient with them, to have sabr with them, and treat them well. Not because we're weak or because we're afraid of them, no. Because they don't know better. Now, if you want to have husn al-khuluq, you need four things. You need four things. And I will conclude these four points. You want to have manners that the messenger of Allah is talking about. You want to be amongst the people who will be the high, in the highest level of paradise. Have these four things. One, have sabr. You have to have patience. Because... As soon as you are saying, I want to be a Muslim, Allah will test you. And you will see people who are so arrogant and they will be on your, in your face and they will talk bad about you and your religion. And Allah and His Messenger ask us to have sabr. That's number one. Two, always hold higher ground. Al Ifa. This is in Arabic we call Ifa. You know, don't go to that level. This is different from having sub. Having an ifa is always, when they see you, they have to see a dignified person. They don't see a person who, you know, goes and left and right. Someone who says, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. I do it. Like the guy who called me and said, Shaykh, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. I'm a good Muslim. What do you do? MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. I commit zina fi sabilillah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know. Now, if you commit a zina and you, you know, this is the lowest of the law. And you want to give da'wah to that person, they will not accept you. So you have to have ifa. You have to have that dignity that Islam is calling to. Number two, you have to have shaja'a. Courage. You know, husn al-khuluq la yu'arid al-shaja'a. You know, having manners in Islam does not contradict being, having courage. Why? Because admitting you're wrong is from husn al and it needs courage for you to stand in front of someone and say i'm sorry or i'm sorry my dear sister i wronged you that is a shaja'a and that is part of husn al this is what is so crucial in this matter fourth point ya ibadullah al-ad you gotta be just you gotta have adala you can say i have a husn al but you, you, you prefer someone over someone because he's from your race, he's from your you know, country, he's from your people. No, al-adala, husn al-khuluq. It is, as a matter of fact, a pillar. And this is what Ibn al-Qayyim al josi mentioned in his book, Madarij Salikin. Uh, this is crucial for us to, to know, ya ibadullah. Jazakumullah khair. Wa subhanahu wa subhanahu wa barakatuh.